Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. Welcome to today's episode of How You're Getting Fucked. I'm your host, Lewis Rossman. This is a very, very old one, but for those of you who live under a rock who may not be aware of it, because I wasn't aware of it until today, I figured I'd tell you. Refrigerators now have TPMs in them, otherwise known as technical protection measures. Technical protection measures are digital locks. And digital locks, unfortunately, due to Section 1201 of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, in some cases are illegal to break and very illegal, three to five years in federal prison, if you show other people how to break them, which is horrible. I bought a house that's a fixer-upper. The person I bought my house from, he has a life that is in almost as much disarray as mine is. As a result of that, he did not have the keys to everything, like mailbox, stuff like that. But once I owned the house and I had a deed to it, it was very easy to give it to a locksmith. Here's my ID, my deed, everything, and he just goes through and changes the locks out for me. It's my house. I'm allowed to do that. But for some reason, when you buy something that has a computer in it, it's a, or if it's a digital good of any type, you could have potentially broken the law. I find this to be disgusting. And I want you to be trained to detect anything that says TPM and to have that same feeling in the gut of your stomach, the disgust that I do when I hear about that acronym, TPM, Technical Protection Measure, that's supposed to protect the manufacturer, protect the creator, when in reality, it just screws you. So this is a GE fridge. This is from a channel called Rayman Can on YouTube. I came across this channel while trying to figure out how to regrow my hair. This was a really cool video Welcome that I was learning about how to use Miracle Grow. It didn't exactly go over the things I was looking for it to go over. But while I was there, I found this video. GE Refrigerator XWFE Water Filter Hack. And I wanted to play this for you just so you could see how fucked up the world that we live in is. Water out of your GE refrigerator's water dispenser and you get that sign, you know, the one that says water filter expired. So you look online for a replacement water filter and you're like, whoa, 50 bucks for one water filter? That's a little bit too much. So of course, like most of us, right, we look for the generic brand after overall, I mean, it's just a water filter and you're like, I'm gonna give that one a shot. So you open up the door, take the old water filter out, put the generic one in, try to dispense water and it does not work. Well, there's a reason why and there's a hack that allows you to. And that's what I'm gonna show you. Look at that, can't get any water to come out. Error, water filter, let's fix this. So the GE water filter contains a RFID chip built into the wrapper, right? The generic brands do not have one. So what we're gonna do is show you how to take this. So later in the video, after taking this thing apart, he shows you that where this is. See this thing? So once we have it cut out and we made sure we did not cut the RFID chip out. He takes the RFID chip, he's gonna put the RFID chip on the new water filter and then put the new water filter in there. This is what I consider somewhat the tricky part. It's really not that tricky at all. You get used to it. If you have any trouble getting it to work the first time around, don't worry, just fiddle around with it a little bit. Eventually you'll get it in the right spot. And there you have it. You have your water filter replaced with this quick hack. And while it may still think that the refrigerator's water filter is old because it's the old one, it at the very least won't give you that error anymore. This man is a hero. He deserves recognition for it. You have my appreciation and respect. Not that that's worth much, but I genuinely appreciate it. This has been added to the Consumer Rights Wiki, along with many other instances of companies doing this type of shit. There's a question as to whether or not this gentleman has broken Section 1201 of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act simply by uploading this video to YouTube. In my opinion, that's fucking stupid. One of the things that I could use from all of you, in addition to uh, being aware of this and pushing back against it, is also logging all of this as often as humanly possible. One of the things I said, a lot of you are going to ask me, Lewis, what can I do? How can I help? What can I do? A lot of things I'm going to ask you to do are things that you're not going to like. They're not going to be fun. Editing a wiki is not fun. Organizing is often not fun. All these are prerequisites necessary to move the ball forward. When we talk to senators about these anti-ownership laws, and more importantly, when we talk to members of the FTC and otherwise about tying, which is something that was went over in the Kodak case, late 80s, early 90s, whereby you are claiming if you want to be able to use this, you have to buy that. There are legal precedents for why this is not legal. And they're getting away with it but they don't have to get away with it. We can push back against it. And the best way for me to push back against this is to have the best database possible of every single one of these anti-consumer practices. After the last few videos I did, there was a giant surge of people coming to the wiki to register, to edit, to make the content over here better so that we could have the best database possible. And I really do appreciate that because as I said, I know this isn't fun work. Sitting there doing research, checking citations, editing issues, adding issues, structuring things. It's not the most fun thing in the world. If you're not sure how to create a new article on the homepage of the wiki, there's a check out our guide on creating your first article. And I put a video over here where I actually walk you through making a new article and I show you how I do it and some of the things there to hopefully make it a little bit easier on you. And we have a, trying to make the instructions as easy as humanly possible. But there's also a large list of articles that could use a lot of improvement. And that's another thing that's not gonna be fun. 
articles that need to work. We got a list over here of a bunch of different articles that can use some work to be made into um, standards compliance with the wiki. And if you want to help us do that, we have a Discord invitation link over here as well. If you would like to ask questions or just be involved with it, if you want to live in a world where digital locks and technical protection measures are in everywhere from your thermostat to your refrigerator, hop on board. Help us create the future that we want to live in. A digital future where you have access to all the innovation, all the knowledge, all the convenience, but it's owned by you. Sumorights.wiki belongs to a nonprofit. Never sponsored, no advertising, no bullshit. Just the facts. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now. We also have the duty not to infringe the IP rights in the process. It is in fact the manufacturers who have the relevant rights, not consumers. <laughs>